This is the tale of an up-and-coming movie star named Roger Rabbit and a down-and-out private detective stay out! named Eddie Valiant. Ooga Booga! Every moment they were together was a new adventure in trouble. Hide me, Eddie! Please! It's a motion picture about friendship. Please, Eddie! Don't tell me I'm making a big mistake! Love. <laughs> Compassion. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I yanked your ears. All the time you yanked my ears? Murder. Marvin Acme. The rabbit cacked him last night. Remember, you never saw me. Sex. I'd do anything for my husband, Mr. Valiant. Anything. And violence. <laughs> <laughs> Tunes get some every time. Hello and welcome to this. What do you want to watch? Spoiler cast for the 1988 film Who Framed George Rabbit. I'm actually hopefully joining me today. Till I'm blight. Oh, gee, Jillica is actually holding me. I'm happy to be here. Who are you attempting to do? <laughs> me, if I was a cotton character in 1947. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That was, that was something. Uh, so yes, today we're talking about Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Uh, connection. We normally have some sort of connection for all these spoiler castles we do. Rescue Rangers, the movie on Net- Disney Plus is coming out. It's very, which very much feels like a spiritual success to this movie. So we're doing the original, the original crossover movie that started the trend of crossing over all crossovers. Who Framed Roger Rabbit. I love how you're like, oh, there's usually a, a next, uh, uh, easy to yeah. see reason we're doing the movie. Let me explain the, uh, <laughs> let me explain yeah. how we got here. <laughs> you know, but otherwise people be like, why are they doing a Hoover and Red Rabbit all these years later? Also to justify Dylan's Blu-ray purchase. Good point. <laughs> all right. So. Please be aware we'll be freely discussing anything and everything about the plot themes in any of the movies. So if you haven't watched it, come back later. Uh, with that said, let's jump to our discussion of Who Framed Roger Rabbit, directed by Robert Zemeckis. Screenplay by Jeffrey, Bri- Jeffrey Price and Peter Seaman, based on Who Censored Roger Rabbit by Gary K. Wolf, starring Bob Hoskins, Christopher Lloyd, Charles Fleischer, Stubby K, and Joanna Cassidy. Down who's luck, private I, Eddie Valiant gets hired by cartoon publisher R.K. Maroon to investigate an adultery scandal involving Jessica Rabbit, the sultry wife of Maroon's biggest star, Roger Rabbit. But when Marvin Acme, Jessica's alleged paramour and owner of Toontown, is found murdered, the villainous Judge Doom bows to catch and destroy Roger. Uh, Dylan, what, what are your memories of Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Why did you feel compelled to buy that 4K Blu-ray? Um, I think it's a really good movie. I think it's um maybe if you were like a kid now and you went to watch this, you'd be like, this is dumb or like something like that. But I remember watching this as a, I remember watching this as a kid. Obviously not when it came out. I wasn't, I'm not that old, but like I watched it as a kid um, on VHS or whatever. And I was like, I was still blown away. It was like, whoa, all these, you know, just seeing all the cutting characters interacting with one another. Um, I remember like just seeing the Lo- the Warner Brothers characters interacting with the Disney characters. Um, and that was like... And my dad, like, trying to explain to me as a kid, like, how monumental this, uh, seeing these characters in the, in the same thing is. And I mean, it still is because they never, it's never happened again. So uh, it's the one and only time you'll see, yeah, you'll see, uh, Daffy and Donnie, probably Donald. Probably them not. Yeah. (laughs) Well, never know. But yeah, uh, probably not. But it's the only time you'll see Daffy and Donald or, um, uh, who else? and Mickey. Bugs and Mickey, yeah, like, like key characters sort of in scenes together. Um, which is funny because they're always paired off. Like, you can't have one have get one more scene than the other. It's like they're always in that. <laughs> they're always, like, paired up. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I have I've really fond memories of this movie. I think it's still a very enjoyable movie. Uh, I think, like, technology-wise, it still looks quite good because it's sort of meant to look off, I guess. Like, it's not, like, trying to make real-life-looking characters. They're, they're cartoon characters just in a, in a in a in a world like obviously it looks a little bit at age but I, I still think the effect looks cool. like there's a lot of stuff in here where I'm, I'm still like oh that's it's done quite well for this and everything so um music's really good 
performances are uh it's this movie's a lot more adult than it is <laughs> aimed at kids which is another funny thing because it it really is just like this detective noir movie but mm. with cartoon characters <laughs> happening um around and happen to be in it but um yeah so i have fun memories and i really liked it and yeah i picked up that 4k blu-ray a couple months back or whatever so i saw it and it was on 10 bucks or whatever i was like yeah fuck it let's buy that for 10 bucks like good great movie 4k let's get that and then when this came up i was like yes good opportunity to finally watch that so yeah no, i liked it and good re- good rewatch i it, it still enjoyed it and i probably haven't watched it for maybe 10 years i don't know yeah, I can't remember the last time I watched it. I'm not 100% certain that I watched it in full or was paying full attention. Wow. It's like, you know, you watch it as a kid and you're like, oh, I don't care about this adult character. Why, why is he so important? Give me more of Roger Rabbit. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I really liked it. It's a lot of, like, impressive, like, feats. It's like how they do certain, like, animated, how they get the animated characters to interact with Bob Hoskins and that kind of stuff. Uh, I think like Corridor Crew have gone through a few of them, different things. Uh, so I'm, I'm probably going to have to revisit some of those too. <laughs> yeah, I don't Break think I've seen those ones. But... So I might, yeah, I might have to watch that actually because I don't think I've seen the breakdowns of those. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, interesting story that kind of, I don't uh, I think it's more impressive like, for what it is, then not necessarily for the movie that it is, you know what I mean? Like, as a technical mm. achievement. I don't think it's a super impressive noir story. No, It's no, kind no, of no, basic. No. I mean, yeah. and then you've got, in the end, it's a villain who was a toon all along, but not anybody you knew, just a random person who Yeah, well, they to wanted kill. to kill him, so they're not going to, like, kill off a character you knew, I guess, is the... I guess, but yeah, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. <laughs> Why did he kill Eddie's brother? I he's just know. a psycho. He's just a crazy. He's a psycho who suddenly team. became a judge and nobody noticed. Yeah. Weird. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, I really enjoyed like the opening of like Roger Rabbit, like filming that short because <laughs> it's very nostalgic of like those. You know, the, the Tom and Jerry's. The, uh, yeah, Tom and Jerry's or the Looney Tunes or the, mm. uh, what are they called? Something Melodies, I can't remember. I don't know. It's something, it like, doesn't matter. But yeah, it's like those short films of, short animated films of them doing crazy shenanigans. And then, you know. Uh, him, Sweetie Bird. With the baby. Uh, and then the great reveal of the baby being like a 30 year old dude <laughs> stuck in a baby body. Uh, the original Benjamin Button. Uh but yeah, super enjoyable. Rogers, a crazy zany little character. Bob Hoskins plays the gruff, you know, <laughs> uh, private eye who's just suffered a loss. And, you know, it's an interesting turning point that, you know, it all hinges on him acting zany towards the end to save the day, to kill all also, those just, weasels. There's just a lot of, like, funny dark humor here. It's like, yeah. Toon killed my... Toon killed my wife. How piano fell on her head. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just like uh, it's funny. I mean, yeah, the major villain got oh, the the major key death is someone getting squashed by a giant safe. So yeah, yeah. it's interesting. Is that is that like he's the head of Acme, obviously the company behind all the crazy inventions in Warner Brothers stuff. And they kept they kill him. They kill him. Yeah, they kill the head of Acme. No more Acme inventions. That's why they stopped. Yeah, that's why. Why the Roadrunner ran out of fucking uh, TNT you and whatever else. Wiley Coyote. Wiley Coyote, sorry, yeah. Yeah. Not the Roadrunner. Side note, do you know they're making that movie, apparently? The- How's that a movie? Like, what's the... How the do you- Wiley Coyote versus Acme. It's like a drama. <laughs> sure. Or something. I can't... It- I think it was a joke, and then it turned into a movie. There's a Wiley Coyote PS1 it. game that's very good. Shout out to that. As a side note. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, lots of interesting, like, animated things. Like, he's gone with, like, these random, like, Western Talking bullets. bullets. Yeah. That's quite amusing. And, like, the cab. Animated cab. That was cool. And then it gets destroyed. Uh, even, like, the, the weird, like, 
sight gags like uh squeaky shoes or like i can't remember what the other oh the or one of the trucks they drop a box of musical chairs it's like a back box of musical chairs and they just start being musical and yeah um or just dumbo at the start like, yeah. it's just dumbo you know the best thing about him pay him peanuts like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Or even, like, especially at the start, like, Roger's like, oh, it's meant to be stars, so he just keeps whacking himself in the head. Yeah. Until like, stars. I'm sorry, I can make stars, I swear, I swear, I swear. <laughs> so he does stars by then. Yeah. Uh, also, super, like, graphic, like, the way they kill toons in this movie. <laughs> like, Yeah, well, melting that, when melting the judge, judge Doom, like, Doom? Whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, Doom. Um, uh, melts that that tune shoe yeah in yeah. the the thing it's like I'm melting. it's like if shrek's like not the buttercup jump <laughs> it's like the shoe's like I'm melting. <laughs> it reminds me of um what's that seth rogan one um the food one sausage oh, pie fuck Sausage party. I remember like watching a trailer for the first time and thinking it was the, the smartest, funniest thing. It's like, it looks like such an animated, like happy go thing. And then we begin like chopping up the fruit or whatever. It's like, ah, I fucking died. <laughs> like, and all that sort of <laughs> The shoe was just like, ah, I'm dying. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I did enjoy like him, him killing the weasels and how they all just started dying off Arthur with the little ghosts going away. That was good. Yeah. Little ghosts fight off. Yeah. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of really small, like, good touches. Good gags. Yeah. Uh, even, like, the the pot of whatever it's called at the end. The truck goes through the building and then a train just takes it. <laughs> and then you all come celebrate, you know? Uh, yeah. There's a lot of, like, uh, lucky conveniences and that kind of stuff. Like, he used disappearing, reappearing ink to write his will. That makes absolutely no sense. Why would you write your will in? It's a... You, you can, literally everything is though it's a cartoon it's a, like i know yeah. it's a live action movie but ultimately it's a cartoon, it's a cartoon. yeah um also just grab it it's like wow this was meant to be a kid's movie <laughs> yeah i mean jessica rabbit's like an interesting character because she's like sort of long she's like quite often one of those most discussed characters of oh she's she, very you objectified know, yeah she's a very objectified but then people try and like because she has that line about you know i'm not bad i'm just drawn this way or whatever like yeah so like there's i've read like stuff before like sort of uh, counter and arguments for and against her being like this sort of male focus sexual i like driven item and then also being like this femme it's like an uh, a femme fatale i guess sort of yeah. thing but yeah it's um she's definitely a very interesting character um, apparently that's exactly how she described in the book though, or whatever. So like that's where yeah. the, I mean, it's, it's a very the, stereotypical femme fatale. It's just, yeah, it's like, that was the whole idea to get the, it's like create a new, like the, the new age, uh, Betty Boop, I guess, which is why they have that scene. Yeah. Like Betty Boop. Betty Boop. Yeah. I can still move. <laughs> what if she says? Yeah. Did you ever watch that show on SBS? <laughs> where it like ripped off the tunes and had like a rip off Betty Boop in it? it was, like, yeah, called, I think, um. um it was like a fucking weird show, but yeah, I can't remember what it's called. But it was like a character who, who like was um, it would white, be, yeah. it's not, it would not hold up Almost to those. Like yeah, it's like it, really offensive these days. There's no <laughs> yeah. way they'll show that anyway. But like, I always remember it because it's like you had that really off Betty Boop, and then you had a character who was obviously a, a rip on Link or whatever. Because yeah. he's like, I'm on a never ending quest to save my girlfriend or whatever. Um, and then the gag was he's gay. Like yeah. that's obviously not <laughs> a good gag that would work today at all and yeah not appropriate but um for, i always think about that show weirdly whenever i see betty boot because like, that used to be on late when i was a kid um I and i'd never seen more of that than betty boot yeah that's the thing like i'd seen more of that show because i used to stay up late and be naughty on school nights and watch like stay up watch south park and that was on after south park um yep. and then sometimes like crank anchors and stuff like that like that was all the adult stuff on sbs so um and then like yeah my my betty boop is like in my mind that and then this <laughs> it's like the, the two highest like appearances of Betty Boop and the Betty Boop in that other show isn't even Betty Boop it's a rip off Betty Boop <laughs> absolutely yeah um yeah interesting movie like <laughs> it did kind of set off the trend of like several years before of like all these things crossing over 
Mm. Uh, I don't know if you get Space Jam without this movie, so. Yeah. Also, so, Which just, is like, yeah, setting. Yeah. I mean, they've done like 2D animation with live action people before, like Mary Poppins springs to mind. Yeah, this movie was like very popular and it had like the crossover element and all that sort of stuff. So, like, I know we had Mary Poppins and that's like the um, invention of the technology, I guess. But yeah, as far as like a cartoon crossover sort of movie or, you know, whatever and stuff like that, I, I really just don't think we get Space Jam without this movie in particular. Yeah. And then if we don't get Space Jam, who knows what else we don't get? Space Jam 2, which I still haven't watched. So you've yeah. seen it. What's better, this or Space Jam 2? Oh, this. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> What's I, this better? This is better or Space Jam 1? Space Jam 1. It's just like, that's part of my childhood. So a yes. seminal piece of my childhood. Uh, and I think I would argue the animation looks better, but maybe it's just like a preference thing. This one looks a little mm. bit, uh, I don't know died out it doesn't look it's as older clean. It's it older as well. maybe it's just a, like art style mm. so a little bit more faded or whatever i guess uh and then uh, yeah lots of little fun cameos all the tunes get to take over their town i mean the politics of this entire thing is quite interesting uh <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, the, uh, the politics almost like it reminds me of um the world of fable mm. kind of like where you've got the town for the like the the fables, for fairy tale people. Yeah. They're sort of like yeah, like fairy town or what, like fairy town land or whatever the fuck it's called. It's fairy like tale. they're like almost se- segregated from mm. the humans and stuff like that, and that's sort of what happens here. I know this is before fabled, but um, yeah. Anyway, that's what I was watching. This was making me think of fable. <laughs> yeah. So I uh, yeah, I'm surprised they didn't like do a sequel or something like. Apparently they were trying to for ages. I remember there was a story like years ago um, about um, it was an interview, maybe in, I don't know, I was reading something, maybe it was Empire Magazine or something where Robert Zemeckis years and years ago had an interview saying he had a script ready and done um, and then there was like talk that they were going to try and do another one. There's been tr- talk that they were trying to do one for years at this stage. So, And look, in a world where they keep like doing legacy sequels and all this sort of stuff, I wouldn't be surprised if we suddenly have one of these come out sometime soon. Yeah, because yeah, there's been talk about it since the release, and they the dude who wrote the book that it's based on. Um, I've never read any of the books, but there was a sequel book. Um, I think there's only two, but um, I think the sequel because the first book was set during the like 80s or whatever, and then the sequel was set during the 90s, whereas the movies like set during the 50s or whatever. So okay, um, so apparently there's three books. Three books. Second Fucking one was called Who P- 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 Plugged Roger Rabbit. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not doing like a impression of anybody. That's how it's written. <laughs> What's the third that one? That was released in 1991. And the third yeah. one was called Who Whacked Roger Rabbit. That oh, was shit. released in 2013. Spoilers, he died. Yeah. 2013? Yeah. Holy shit. You're like, oh, I need to get I need a paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, absolutely. They could do a sequel. Like, I don't feel like n- none of the, like the Looney Tunes or Disney characters. Or, like, you've only got more. You've more only got added. more characters to work with. It's just a matter of getting those right. companies yeah. to work together in the year twenty twenty, whatever. Two, where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. That that would be an interesting concept of like, what would you? What story would you tell with all those characters? <gasps> Yeah, I don't know. I mean, would it be it's, about how they're all depressed that all the people they knew age and die while they live forever. No, I mean, you 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 just make the story. You make up a story that is like a cool idea for like a for noir sort of thing, and then you just build it into that universe. Like you you don't make a, a story that's centered on that universe. The fact that there is a universe in which there's tunes and real people. Like the story just happens. Like because that's the thing. This movie isn't about. Like, how did these p- tunes come to be in the real world? Or, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's just a story. It's just, you know, it's in the world. Absolutely. They live. They're, there's no, like, reason or anything. It's just, that's how the world is. There's tunes and there's, there's humans. It's... Yeah. Anything else? Any other highlights? I did enjoy Tweety trying to murder him. That was kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, those clicks off the fingers. and Like, you, yeah, you can I'd, clearly I'd... see he's holding on for dear life. What are you doing? 
Also, that's right. That's ready bird for you. Also, Bugs Bunny not giving a parachute. Uh, that was quite amusing. Typical. Poor Dick. Um, <laughs> what was the last comment I was going to make? Oh, um, it's sort of fucked up that this guy gets to, Bob Hoskins gets to play this role in which he gets to interact with all these cartoon characters and stuff like that. And then he also gets to play Mario. It's like such a weird, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what a weird career he had. Oh. Yeah. I mean, he's done a lot of really good movies, but it's just, it's always like funny to me that the same guy who plays Mario also is the same guy who gets to interact with Disney and Mar- Warner Brothers characters and animation characters in the one movie. It's like crazy. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to Bob Hoskins. <laughs> mm. yeah. All right. Uh, let us know what you think of Who Frame Roger Rabbit. You're going to explosion.com slash Twitter or jump to your Discord at explosion.com slash Discord. If you want to help us out here at What Do You Want to Watch? Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or on Chase or tell people about the show or leave us five stars. Anyway, you can leave five stars. And if you like this episode, thoughts worth it all, head on over to a coffee page at explosion.com slash support. Thank you very much for listening. Until next time, keep watching stuff, I guess. I'm a pig! I'm a tomb! I'm not bad. I'm just drawn that way. <laughs> but tell me, Eddie. Is that a rabbit in your pocket or you're just happy to see me? Touchstone Pictures and Steven Spielberg present a Robert Zemeckis film. We tunes may act idiotic, but we're not stupid. Who framed Roger Rabbit?